I'm John Kaiser at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver, November 13th, 2021. I am with Rick Mazur, CEO of Forum Energy Metals Corp. Rick, welcome to Vancouver. Okay, it's home. <laughs> That's right. I'm the one who's visiting Vancouver, <laughs> which used to be home for me. That's right. And return. And speaking of returning home, in 2015, you left what had been your home for 11 years with Forum, the Athabasca Basin's uranium project, where you and partners spent uh, over 30 million dollars exploring oh, a dozen or so prospects, uh, mainly on the rim of the Athabasca Basin. And you journeyed into uh, the Janus Lake Copper Project, as well as the Love Lake Project. But with the recent revival in interest in the uranium sector, both with its tie-in as nuclear energy as baseload for renewable clean energy, and also because there's a push underway to get the price of uranium back to where it belongs, between $60 and $100, yeah. so that it is worthwhile to develop uh, uh, existing deposits or explore for new high-grade deposits in the Atha Athabasca Basin. Now, as you pivot back to your original focus, which of those other projects besides Fur Island, which is under option to Orano, and Wollaston, which is actually a brand new project that uh, you will be drilling in the first quarter of 2022, which of the other projects in that portfolio has you chomping on the bit to get back at? <laughs> uh, that's an easy question. Oh. Uh, the Northwest Athabasca Joint Venture. Uh, we're 40% operators of, of that project with partners uh, NextGen, Cameco, and Arano. Uh, the, it's, as the name of the uh, project, it's in the northwest side of the basin. And uh, we have a uh, one and a half million pound uh, uranium deposit called Maurice Bay on the property that was discovered in the 1970s. Uh, that's that's a, what we call a perch deposit in the sandstone. So our, our exploration model is to find a much larger uh, unconformity or basement-hosted uranium deposit. So we drilled that thing back um, in 2014 and 15. Um, there's about 20 targets on the property. We, we haven't tested them all. Uh, we want to get back there as soon as we can to um, uh, finish the job that we started about uh, six or seven years ago. And um, in 2023, uh, the winter of 2023, uh, we plan to get back there and just, just do that, uh, go and drill our uh, Northwest Athabasca joint venture. So the Northwest uh, Athabasca JV was one of the last projects that you put any exploration effort into before you hit the pause button because nobody was interested in uranium. And now you're returning to finish this unfinished business. Yep, absolutely. And, and as you mentioned as well, uh, our, our, our next catalyst for the company will be drilling at Wollaston, uh, which we own 100% and is only 30 kilometers away from a, uh, an existing uranium process facility. Mm. Okay. Um, Love Lake, was a project that you guys staked. Uh, it had been owned in the past by others, explored for nickel, platinum, group, uh, metals, uh, sniffs here and there, but nothing ever really found. You had Larry Halbert do a complete rethink of it. Uh, yep. It's depleted of nickel job. at the surface. Uh, you said, you know, it's, it's, it's intact in its initial uh, formation uh, uh, geometry. Uh, there should be Voises Bay style magnetic segregation deposits somewhere down deep. You did magnetic surveys, and this time last year, we had very high hopes. You had multiple significant mag targets that could be uh, these feeder zones, but they, they mean nothing if they don't have a massive sulfide body connected with them. And you did an EM survey this year to see which of these mag targets ended up having a conductor associated with the uh, magnetic anomaly. Mm -hmm. And we were quite disappointed that only one Corwin Lake had such a conductor. You did a summer drill program. All assays are still pending. Uh, it doesn't sound like you have high hopes for the uh, 
Corwin Lake, uh, Boise's Bay style conductor target. But the other ones, Corwin Creek and and what lake? Uh, what's what's left? What are what's what did you encounter there? And what are you hoping to see in these upcoming results? And and what would you need to do next if you get what you see? Sure. Um, well, these uh, the, the Corvin Creek and what lake showings are historical showings of of copper, nickel, platinum, and palladium. Uh, what Lake was uh, last drilled in the year 2000, and, and it was kind of a pretty mediocre effort. In fact, they drilled in the wrong direction <laughs> from our our, um, our investigations in the field. So uh, we poked a, a number of holes into Watt Lake, where where there's some some good uh, trench uh, assays, and uh, what what we're seeing in the drill core. Uh, looks more like a structural style uh, of deposit, maybe as an analog, uh, uh, lactizeal perhaps. We, we got to wait and see the assays, uh, but we can see um, structurally controlled uh, copper and nickel, nickel mineralization. Now, Corvin Creek, um, uh, we got four holes into that. Uh, it was drilled in 19, last in 1968. Um, never assayed for platinum group metals. So uh, that's v looking very interesting to us in that uh, what we're seeing in the core, uh, according to Larry Hulbert, uh, who's seen just about every copper nickel deposit in the world, is definite cumulate, uh, uh, cumulate uh, magmatic uh, sulfides that are sort of uh, net textured. Um, so we're, we're kind of excited about uh, Corvin Creek. Now, you mentioned the EM targets as well. Um, you know, the system, the airborne system that we used uh, goes down to maybe 300 meters in, in depth, um, 400 if you stretch. But, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna uh, reevaluate um, our geophysical approach to that and we might just go and, and uh, do some ground EL, um, electromagnetics, which will have a deeper depth uh, uh, penetration. And, uh, you know, we'll just see if some, uh, something comes out of that in terms of, of one of these uh, massive uh, feeder zone type targets like Boise's Bay. And how expensive would that ground EM You know what? Be? Well, we did, uh, we had some, the reason we're thinking this is we, we used uh, horizontal loop EM, high frequency uh, HLEM, uh, that um, uh, you don't need to cut lines and stuff like that. The guys kind of just run through the bush and, and, and it was a, a very cost effective survey. Okay. So that project requires at least one more layer of uh, geophysical data before you can write off the Boise's Bay potential for the Love Lake complex? Well, we're, we're certainly considering that and, and um, uh, let's see what uh, kind of results we get out of uh, Watt Lake and, and Corvin Creek. Mm -hmm. Now the Janus Lake project, which, which you optioned to Rio Tinto in 2018, they made you uh, triple the size of the project to a 52 kilometer strike to a uh, cover the entire strike of the basin. Uh, and this is stratigraphy that's on its side. Unlike Udokan, the, the billion ton system in Russia, which is sort of flat and has a mount, an inconvenient mountain on top, which the Soviets actually considered using a nuclear bomb to remove <laughs> as a, as a pre-stripping strategy. Back in the 70s, yeah. <laughs> but but the grade of that's high, it's big. And what Rio Tinto was after was something like this tilted on the side that could be, you know, open pit mine on with these elongated pits. They've done a lot of uh, target generation work, but they've spent uh, most of their drill, done all their drilling within the central third of the project. They need to spend $30 million to, to vest for 80, 80, 80% 80 uh, by, by uh, 2026 but there's a partial vesting of 51% for only 10 million. And I understand they've uh, spent somewhere around 14 million. So they could technically uh, vest for 51% now, but they haven't 
done this yet. Uh, they haven't really delivered anything that confirms the sort of UDOCAN scale model. Uh, what if uh, they suddenly had a brain fart and said, gee, let's give these 16, about $16 million to, 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 to the Forum Energy crew and say you can only spend <laughs> that in the northern and southern third that we haven't really done as much with and make, make it to the junior to kill. What would you do if that sort of miraculous uh, <laughs> gift, and they would still earn 80%, of course, but uh, do you have any uh, sort of ideas about what, well, the, the, what that, that part of the basin has potential for that they haven't really looked at? Yeah, well, uh, first thing is uh, uh, Rio Tinto has done a really uh, good job uh, in the two short summer field seasons that they've had to actually map uh, and prospect the, the north and, and south of the basin, but we're talking about 52 kilometers here. So um, uh, they've certainly increased the density of knowledge of the, the geology uh, along that 52 um, kilometer uh, strike length. And uh, we think we have prospective geology in particular to the south of the historical drilling area where, where most of the uh, drilling has been done to date, and uh, I, um, if you, if if you're asking me, I mean, Udacon, uh, as you said, is 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 a nice sedimentary pile. It's not folded and faulted like what we're dealing with uh, Janus Lake, um, but uh, it's a sedimentary pile, and there's copper throughout that whole sedimentary pile, and then there's one horizon of Udacon that's very prolific. In, in high grade copper mineralization. Um, so, um, you know, uh, maybe what we're, we're looking at here is, is the smoke and the fires is still somewhere else. And uh, I certainly believe that. What would I do? I would, uh, um, when, when we first drilled it in 2018, um, uh, IP surveys uh, actually delineated the Jansom target quite nicely. And um, Rio Tinto tried to do some uh, IP, not, not very much, and a couple of the targets picked up an, another geological f formation called calc silicates uh, that weren't, that don't have copper. So it was a, it was a, a mixed approach, but it did find Jansom. So what would I do? I would, uh, with that kind of money, because uh, IP is not cheap. I would certainly do uh, lines of, of, of induced polarization surveys over the prospective geological areas that, that have been identified by uh, Rio Tento's work and uh, drill the heck out of those, uh, um, those IP targets if, if, if they came out of that survey. Okay, and then um, suppose Rio Tinto says, eh, we don't think there's going to be anything world-class anywhere on this property, and we've had such a great cash flow year from high copper prices and iron ore prices, and, and the bean counters are saying, uh, we need write-offs. Suppose they say, ah, let's just cut and run, give it back to uh, Forum Energy uh, so you have 100% back, and we'll take the $14 million write-off to reduce our taxes. What would you then do with that central third where they spent most of that 14 million on? Yeah, um, again, I think that's an easy question. I would go back to Jansom, which was the first uh, target that we, we drilled um, that brought Rio Tinto to the table. Uh, they did only four holes in that, that uh, prospect. Um, the mineralization is, is quite uh, it's a strata bound mineralization that's quite has some good continuity to it. Looks like it's kind of a, a sin form, and they've only poked a few holes in one limb of, of, of the sin, sin form. So I would drill that thing out, and and I would um, uh, I I would try and see if we could build a resource of you know 100 million plus tons uh, of economic grades of open pit. Um, so a mountain ore type of a target. Yeah, yes. Okay. Well, 
uh, in a in a much better jurisdiction to well to yeah mine. Not, not in a park <laughs> they to won't mine. let you develop to mine and yeah and open but I, I i i mean try and build a hundred million ton uh size thing which would be i i think uh, an, uh, an an attractive uh uh opportunity for a more mid mid mid-size copper producing company perhaps now you've been with forum energy for 17 18 years the 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 first uh, sort of 11 12 years were uh, focused on uranium in the normal cycle of a junior somebody who's with a project and a cycle for a very long time it comes to an end they leave the company everything gets dropped uh, and if for whatever reason the theme cycle in this case uranium comes alive again they have to start from scratch what is it like to still be in the driver's seat of forum mm -hmm. energy with all that 30 million dollars plus worth of information in your files you in exploration vp ken wheatley ran all this program know what could have been done differently or 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 what should be done next based on what was learned what it is like to 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 be in this position to take that entire sort of one might say never quite made it portfolio and pick up where you left off five, six years ago. Yeah. Um, well, it's blessing for sure. Uh, when the, um, I think this is the beauty of having a diversified portfolio. Uh, I'm certain that's what I'm certainly learning from, from this. I mean, you and I met, uh, really, really got going once you found out about the Janus Lake venture, right? Or, well, you knew, we've known each other for a long time, but you really started following what we were doing when Rio Tinto came in on Janus Lake and then Love Lake. And, and I remember talking to you at that time. Uh, and one of the things that, that you said to me was sort of like, and you have this underlying uh, value of uranium assets. So it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty nice little company. And sure enough, this underlying value of, of uranium assets is coming to life again, which we knew would happen sometime. I mean, that's why we held on to them. And that's why I was staking uranium claims as early as, well, this, uh, or be, uh, be before the whole uranium thing happened in, in 2020. So, um, yeah, we knew uranium would turn around and uh, we're, we're gonna uh, certainly focus on our, our quality assets in the Athabasca Basin. This, this is John Kaiser with Rick Mazur in Vancouver at the Metals Investor Forum. Rick, thank you for participating in the Metals Investor Forum.